So we've all seen the text responses from large language models and these are very useful in many scenarios. But ultimately text is unstructured data, it's very difficult to extract precise information from raw text. And because of that, it's also difficult to integrate that raw text with other systems. Let's look at an example. We may ask a model about Bill Gates, who is this guy? And it's going to give us a response and that response might look like the following, but this is just textual data. Your other systems might need this data in a more structured format and we can use structured outputs in Llama Index or in other tools like Langchain in order to achieve this. So for example, if we use a JSON schema, we can turn this textual output into a structured JSON format. So we can see we have the name field, we have the nationality and so on. So it's taken that raw text data and it's transformed it into a structured format. In this case, it's JSON data. We can also do this with Python classes, for example, Pydantic models. And here's another example of the schema we might have for a Pydantic model. And we're gonna see how to use Llama index in this video to achieve this transformation from raw text into a structured Pydantic model class. And we're gonna take the raw text from a PDF and we're gonna turn that into a class. So before we get started, if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. And thank you very much to everyone that's contributed to that. It's greatly appreciated. So let's dive in and don't forget to like and subscribe as well. Now the introduction to Llama Index is pretty simple. This is one of the leading frameworks for building LLM powered agents over your data. And the other big framework that's similar is Langchain. I'm a fan of Llama Index, but Langchain is also very good for these kind of workloads. So I want to start with a quick overview of Llama Index. It offers nice integrations with things like vector databases, good tools for data processing, and it also offers integrations with the main LLM providers, for example, OpenAI, Gemini, and so on. Now, I'm preparing a vector database course, and I'm going to release that hopefully quite soon. And it's going to dive much more into this particular framework, but for now, let's focus on structured outputs. Now, I'm going to open a page from the documentation. I'll leave a link to that below the video. This is the Llama Index Introduction to Structured Data Extraction. And the idea, as we've explored at the start of the video, is the ability to turn regular human language into specific regular and expected formats for consumption by computer programs. And as you can see in this last paragraph here, the core of the way structured data extraction works in Llama Index is using Pydantic classes. Now, if you're not familiar with Pydantic, I did do a series on that. I'll leave a link to that below the video as well. In a nutshell, it's a widely used data validation and conversion library in Python. So if you want to define a Pydantic model, you subclass this base model, and then you have the fields that you want on the model, as well as the type annotations. Now there's a section of this page that I want to highlight. This is really important for understanding how this works. And it's the conversion of the Pydantic objects to JSON schemas. So what you can do is you can take the model representation, which is essentially the class, and you can turn that into a JSON schema. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a second with a real example. And as it says as well in this documentation, if we go to the section on using annotations, LLMs are essentially going to use the JSON schema that Pydantic has produced, as we saw above, as instructions on how to return data. Now, to help them out, what you can do is be more explicit with the fields. For example, you can define a field and give it a natural language description that is going to be converted into that JSON schema and sent to the LLM. And that's going to help it understand what the particular field is. So using these annotations can also help get better outputs from the models. Now, as I said, I want to look at an example. So I'm going to open VS Code and I have a completely empty directory here. What we're going to do is initialize a project using UV. We can use the UV init command for that. And that generates that on the left hand side. Once we've done that, we can add Pydantic and we're going to demonstrate how it generates these JSON schemas from the class. So we've installed Pydantic. What we can do now is go to main.py and we can paste this example from the documentation. So I'm going to copy this code and let's paste it in here. And if we go to the top, we can bring in the imports needed for this. So what we're doing is defining a line item and an invoice class. These are subclasses of Pydantic's base model, which means that they are going to be model classes. And now we can turn them into a JSON representation. So if we wanted to turn the line item into JSON, let's copy the name of the model. And if we go to the bottom, I'm going to import something from Python's pprint module. And that's the pprint function. And by the way, that stands for pretty print. And what we can do is pretty print something to the terminal. We're going to take the line item model and that has a static function called model JSON schema. So if we execute that function on the line item class, and it's important to note this is not on an instance of the class, we're executing this static function on the class itself. So model JSON schema is going to generate this JSON schema for the model class. Let's see that in action by going to the terminal. And I'm going to clear what we have here and we're going to run the uv run command and it's main.py. 
When we run that, we should hopefully see the pretty printed JSON representation of the line item model. For example, here we get the description and it says a line item in an invoice. We also get the properties with the different fields on the model, such as item name and price. Now, where are these coming from? Let's go back to line item. We can see the doc string here, a line item in an invoice. That's actually what is turned into the description in this JSON data. And we can see the fields here, item name and price and so on. And that data is represented under the properties. So we've turned the class definition into a JSON schema. And that is very useful. That's what's going to be sent to the language model to help it prepare this data in a structured manner. So I now want to move on to a practical example using Llama Index. So let's go to the terminal here and we're going to run UV Add and we're going to install Llama Index like this. So UV Add Llama Index and that's going to install that into this environment. And while that's installing, I just want to look at this Langchain page here. So Langchain also supports structured outputs. If we look at this diagram here, you can see that it takes this natural language, I'm Lance and I like to bike. And that is then passed into the model and there is some schema definition underpinning that. In this case, it's got two fields, name and interest. And then the model can process that alongside the schema definition and it produces the structured output with the name and the interest in a dictionary. So again, highlighting the process of natural language being converted into a structured output. We're now going to look at this PDF and this is going to be the dummy data for this video. We're going to turn this into a structured output and I'll leave a link to this sample invoice just below the video. So I've downloaded this PDF and if we look at VS Code here and we bring back the sidebar, we now have this data directory that contains sample invoice.pdf and we're going to read that into our application using Llama Index. So let's go back to the Llama Index documentation and I'm going to search for an object here and that's the PDF reader object. Let's go to this page and this is one of many objects you can use to read in data. It has a load data method and if we look at the left hand side you can see all of these different readers that are available in Llama Index out of the box. So we can use this with Airbyte, Airtable and so on. There are so many readers here. And we also have ones for databases like Chroma Vector Database and CouchDB and so on. Now in order to turn this PDF file into a structured output, we need to actually read the PDF in. So we're going to use this PDF reader. So let's go back to VS Code and I'm going to remove all of this and we're going to paste in some code here. So we've imported PDF reader from Llama Index. We've also imported pathlib.path and we've instantiated the PDF reader. We can now use that PDF reader to actually read the contents of the sample invoice. So we're going to get a variable back here called documents and we're going to take our PDF reader and we're going to call that load data method. And we can pass a file into that. You can see we're referencing the sample invoice.pdf that we have here on the file system. And that's going to give us back an array of different documents. In this case, it's going to be a single document inside that array. So what we can do is we can get the text from that by indexing in at documents index zero. And that gives us the document and we can get the text from that using the dot text property. And let's just print the text to the terminal. Now we can try running this by going to the terminal here and we're going to rerun the, the uv run command. And we're running main.py and hopefully we're going to see the text from that invoice appearing on the terminal. Now you can see the output has appeared here and if we look at what's actually in the text you can see things like addresses and email addresses. We also have order numbers, invoice numbers and so on. Now it would be very useful to extract some of that out of the raw text and store it in a structured format and that's what we're going to do next. So let's go to the top here and we're going to import the base model class from Pydantic and we can now define a class and I'm just going to paste this in here and we also need to import date time. So let's just bring in the date time module as well. And we're, what we're doing here is defining a class called invoice data. And this is going to be the structured output that we want to get after processing from the LLM. So the invoice data has some fields here such as vendor, invoice date, due date, invoice number, total due, and also items, which is a list of strings. And you can see the typing going on here. Now I've added this comment here, convert to date time. And this is one of the things that Pydantic is going to do. What we can see here if we go down to the text that's been extracted. Now let me try and find one of these dates. It's the invoice date from the actual invoice. So if we go up here we can see some due dates and invoice dates. What we want to do is take that string data, that text data, and we're going to convert it or coerce it to a date time. And that is possible with Pydantic because of these type annotations. So let's try and do that. Now we have the Python or the Pydantic class 
And once we have the model with our structure, we can use Llama Index's LLM integrations, for example, with the OpenAI models. So let's go back to the documentation and we're gonna see how to use structured LLMs. The highest level way to extract structured data in Llama Index is to instantiate a structured LLM. So let's go down here and we're gonna see what we need to do. Now the first thing we're going to do is install this. If you want to use the OpenAI models, we need to install Llama Index LLMs OpenAI. So let's go back to VS Code and I'm going to go to the terminal here and we're going to run UV Add and we're going to paste that in there to install that. And there's another package I want to install and that's python.env and that's going to allow us to securely read in data from a .env. Now once we've done that, we can go back to the documentation and here we can see similar PDF loading classes or code here and this is using an uber receipt as the pdf so we're going to pick this up from here so let's copy this import and we're going to bring that into the top of the file we're importing openai from the llama index.llms.openai module and this gives us an interface for working with openai models and if you don't like openai there are plenty of alternatives in this llms module from llama index now once we have that, let's go back to the documentation. What we do is we instantiate the OpenAI object and we provide the model we want to actually run. And that gives us back this LLM object. We can then call a function called as structured LLM and we pass the class that we want to actually use as the structured definition into that function. And that gives us back this SLLM or structured LLM, which we can then call with the dot complete function and pass any text into. Now the text here is the text that's coming from that PDF. So we're going to replicate this workflow here. I'm gonna copy these lines of code and let's go back to VS Code. Now, if we go to the very bottom here, underneath where we have the text from our PDF, I'm gonna remove the print statement and paste this in. And one change we need to make is we need to use the right class and it's called invoice data. That is our Pydantic model class. And we pass that to as structured LLM. And that's going to return a structured LLM around our Pydantic model. And finally, if we go to the bottom here, we get a response by calling the structured models complete method and passing the text that we extracted from the PDF above into the complete method. Now we're not going to run this yet because in order to interact with OpenAI's models, we need an OpenAI API key. Now I installed python.env and that means we can create a .env in this directory. And I'm gonna add a variable here called OpenAI API key and I'm going to paste mine into this, but I'm not gonna let you see that. So we're gonna cross over to main.py after I paste that API key in. So we're now safely back in main.py. Let's bring in the load.env function from the .env module and we can just call that to load in the environment variables from the .env file. And finally, we're ready to start looking at the response from the model in this structured format here with the invoice data. So let's go back to the documentation and we can see how to do this. Now response from the above method here, that is a llama index completion response and it has two properties and that's the text property and the raw property. Text contains the JSON serialized form of the Pydantic ingested response. And that sounds a bit complicated, but we can see the response here in that format. So it essentially takes the Pydantic model and dumps that to JSON data. And we can see that JSON data here. The important thing though, is that this is not a text response. It's a structured JSON response that has the fields and values that we expect based on the model definition. So let's see an example. I'm gonna copy this line of code or these two lines of code. And let's go down to the terminal here and just below the response we can print these in and i'm just going to go to the top and we need to also import the json module from python so import json and now we can look at this response and see what's coming back so let's bring the terminal up here and we're going to clear what we have remember this is only going to work with openai if you define that openai api key so let's run uv run main.py and we can see what we get back from the language model hopefully a structured format on the terminal when we dump that to JSON. And we can see the response that we have here. Now this is quite interesting. What I'm gonna do is bring the invoice on the right hand side so we can compare what we have here to the actual invoice. So I've now got this side by side comparison and let's start with the vendor here. It's got the vendor as demo sliced invoices and that corresponds to what we can see here at the top of the from section. And the invoice date is the 25th of January, 2016. And the due date is the 31st of January, 2016. And you can see that that actually matches what we have here in the invoice. So it's extracted that specific data into this structured format. And that is super useful for downstream applications that you are integrating these responses with. We have the invoice number here, and you can see that at the top of this table as well. 
and the total due is $93.50 and you can see that here. Now the final thing we've got here is items and that's an array and you can see the web design item and also the subtotal, the tax and the total and it's getting these keys and values from this bottom section of the PDF. So I think this is super powerful. We've taken the raw response from the language model and instead of just raw text, we've converted that into a structured output. In this case, it's JSON data from a Pydantic model. Now what we did was we took response.txt and we loaded that from JSON data into a Python dictionary and then we dumped that to the terminal and we indented it by two. So essentially we loaded it from JSON to a dictionary and then we converted it back to JSON data just with better indentation. Now I'm going to show the other property that we have and remember the dot text property is one property but it also has a dot raw property and that is the completion response object in llama index. So I'm going to create a variable here called invoice data and that's going to be response dot raw and I'm going to remove these two lines of code and I'm going to paste in a couple of extra lines. So this invoice data is actually the raw Pydantic model. So what we did above here is we passed that model into the as structured LLM method and the response that we get back when we actually query the model, the dot raw property of that response should be the Pydantic model with the fields and with the correct data. So what I'm doing here at the bottom is I'm printing the type of the invoice data. Hopefully that's going to be a Pydantic model and we also print the actual object itself. So let's go to the terminal again here. Let's clear out what we have and we're going to rerun uv run main.py and we're going to see what we get back. And we can see the response that we have now. So the type is the invoice data class. That's the Pydantic model. And underneath that, if we print the object, we get the representation of that object. Now this is super useful. Once we have that object, we can actually access individual fields on the object. For example, if we wanted to get the vendor, all we would need to do is go back to the bottom here and I'm going to add a print statement at the bottom. We're going to take the model and we can use the dot vendor property on the model to actually access that individual piece of data. So let's clear the terminal and one more time we're going to run main.py and you can see from the output now we can actually extract that single piece of information that represents the vendor. So this is so useful. We now have an object that we can use in our applications and downstream apps which could be for example Airflow tasks or Dagster assets or machine learning models, web applications, whatever you want, databases of course, they can all use this structured data and that's going to be super useful because they can extract the specific parts of the information that they require and that's going to be much easier to work with than raw text. So as useful as this is, there are some caveats here. Now the Pydantic validation that we get based on this model that we define is not a guarantee. You should be testing your data thoroughly when you use structured outputs and validating that what you get back is actually matching the schema and the values are correct. So you can make sure that you're testing thoroughly to make sure that you're getting what you expect as the values for these fields, depending on your input data. But once you have this in place, it's of course super easy to add and remove fields from the models as you require. And these Pydantic models are super nicely integrated into Llama Index. Now I just want to finish by noting that this functionality is not only available in Llama Index. As we saw earlier, it's also available in Langchain. So for the Langchain enthusiasts out there, this is going to work nicely with that particular package. And there's also a nice package in Python called Instructor. And this is a package geared towards specifically producing structured outputs for LLMs. Now I'm planning to do a video on this and it's going to be somewhat similar to this video. But if you're interested in that or any other content, let me know just below this. And again, Instructor is nicely integrated with Pydantic for defining the structure of the outputs. So we can look at that in a future video. If you found this one useful, give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more. And if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. And again, thank you to everybody that's contributed to that. It's greatly appreciated. And we'll see you soon in the next video.